Good morning my darlings, I am in a very good mood this morning, it is the weekend, we have started the day with a lovely long walk, a really beautiful walk around the village, around the fields, um, we've already had brunch, I had the strangest craving for a homemade soup, so I made a broccoli and blue cheese soup in the Thermomix which was seriously good um, and there's enough left over for me to eat during the week as well for our lunches and another piece of good news Sainsbury's is now delivering supermarket shops um, to where we live so that's fantastic we don't need to do the queuing and the one-way system around Waitrose anymore so all in all a fantastic start to the weekend so it's a beautiful day today thank goodness the weather forecast was correct so Charlie and I have a list of things to do outside and the first is painting the duck house. Making moves, trying to get away from this life I'm living. Same old things every day. You'll remember in yesterday's vlog, or the one before yeah the one before um, I showed you this beautiful I think it's called an oriental beach parasol from Wayfair and I mentioned that uh, we haven't had a chance to put it up yet because we didn't have any non windy rainy days so naturally today as soon as the Sun comes out I have put up my beautiful pink parasol and it really is just absolutely gorgeous so this time last year and the year before and the year before we were in Ibiza and I mentioned in the other vlog as well that um, Charlie and I are f and my mum, our favourite place in Ibiza is a hotel called Atsaro and they also have a beach, a beach club um, and they have this style of umbrella but in white there and I have lusted over them for so so long and I looked everywhere for them and they were either thousands of pounds or nowhere to be found I saw this one on Wayfair and it wasn't major major cheap but a good price I felt for the statement that it brings to the garden and Charlie and I spend a lot of time outside as you've probably been able to tell from the vlogs and if the weather's like this during the week then of course we will bring our work to the outside table um, so yeah I am thrilled with this it looks really beautiful underneath as well it's got this gorgeous detail and the little charms around the outside bringing a little bit of Adsado Ibiza to the Cotswolds. So very, very happy with that. Epic, isn't it? Yep. Nice shorts, darling. Cheers, mate. These are my gardening shorts. Gardening Next shorts. Next job, we're going to clear the pond with this natural product. So what is this? Uh, <laughs> it's called Envy, the brand. Envy. <clears throat> I saw it advertised on YouTube. So I uh -huh. saw this on a pre-roll advert. Mm. It's called, this one, you put this one in first. It's called Sludge Clear. And then you put the other one in. And basically both of them, you activate them by putting them in tubs with pond water oh. for about two to three hours in a warm place. And then it, it I believe there's like back, natural bacteria in here. And then you put it in the pond and it eats the algae. Wow. So we'll see. I think, to be fair, I think it is designed for smaller ponds. <laughs> um, Have you only got one packet, darling? Well, no, but this is 12 tablets. So normally like a normal pond, you do one, but we're oh, probably right. going to do two tablets per tub. Ah, okay. And then yeah yeah um it didn't say that it's not for big ponds but obviously when you read the back and you're talking about gallons and stuff i mean i don't know how many gallons of water are <laughs> Ten thousand. It's, it's worth a try isn't it yeah and it's natural it's there's no chemicals in this what about that hay barley um well idea? that's another option isn't it but we you know this was easy to get hold of yeah i don't know where we get that as of yet cool One thing at a time so we're going to give that a go and then we're going to pimp up the duck house aren't we yes we're going to give it a couple of coats of like a What's the colour called? Uh, Mellow Sage. Mellow Sage from Crown, isn't it? And have you got it? Yeah, we've got it over there. So we're going to give that a couple of coats today and then we're going to put together another glamorous job, put together our bin covers. <laughs> our bin store, yeah. yeah. It is fun, all fun. glam in the Cotswold Garden okay. today. Let's do it. Change this feeling Wasting no more time Don't care about what you're saying Try to keep me down No time for all your playing We're just 
just having a quick coffee break after painting the first layer on the duck house. Good service, look at this. There you go. Cheers mate. Oh, I like the design you've done there, darling. Very yeah. artistic. It's like a... Um... Tried to do a heart, but... Did you? Uh, yeah, I did, but it didn't, <laughs> didn't come out very well. <laughs> so we've done the first coat on the duck house and it's um, Crown Paints Mellow Sage, which on my tester, on my little sample wooden thing that I've been doing, looked a little bit more, well, sagey <laughs> to be honest and um, this is quite um hard to show you when it's lighting actually but it's turned out quite light almost white i think if it was a shady day it might look a little bit more sagey green but it's looking quite pristine white at the moment so what i think i'm going to do is have a little rummage in the garden shed for a deeper sage green sample pot and i might just blend it in to the um to the paint pot that we're using over there. I'm sure you can just mix paints. I don't think that'll be a problem. This stuff on the floor is going to be a wooden bin cover and there were no instructions. So yeah, Charlie and I are not the best when it comes to using our common sense to put things together. Could really do with Charlie's dad or even Charlie's brother here to help, but it's just the two of us. I'm sure we'll figure it out, but yeah, we definitely need some coffee to alert our brains and try and figure out how to do it. But first, yeah, let's have a little rummage in the shed, see if we can find some sage green paint samples. Worst case scenario, I could just put like a dark green in, couldn't I? And I've got a few of those. Um, I think bandstand? Nope. Let's see. Oh, we don't use farrow and ball anywhere. Maybe these could work. Just a quick reminder, darlings, because this is the weekend vlog, so I'll be filming today and tomorrow. There is not gonna be a vlog tomorrow um, because that means I get to have my Sunday, just still doing a little bit of filming, but it means I don't have to edit a video on Sundays. I think this is what I'm gonna do for the next little while. I think I'm about two days ahead, so you probably will be seeing this either on Monday or Tuesday. Um, but yeah, whatever day it is, there will not be a vlog tomorrow. But also, I know I normally say this at the end of videos, but I just wanted to say it before the end, in case you're not watching all the way through. It would mean the world to me if you do hit the subscribe button down below. We're trying to hit the next milestone. Um, share my videos with a friend if you know someone that might enjoy them. And yeah, giving videos a thumbs up, leaving comments, sharing, notification bells, it all makes a big difference to me. And it's a super duper easy thing to do. Whenever I watch um, a fellow YouTuber, I always try to at least give it a thumbs up or a comment if I am on my phone or if I've got time, because I know what a huge um, help it is. So that would mean the world to me. I just was thinking about that as I was carrying bits of wood across the garden. So my next job for today is I am finally going to finish the green chairs. Um, the reason why you've not seen an update on the white chair upholstery is because I'm still waiting for the fabric, but I can finish the green chairs. They just need a couple, well, one of them needs its final coat. In fact, let me show you. So this one just needs its third coat of the darker gold. Um, I did the first coat in the crown striking, and then I ordered this on Amazon. It's a Rust-Oleum gold furniture paint. That is what's going on as the second and third coat. And then this chair, all I've done so far is take the tacks out. So I need to do some sanding down and then the first coat, second coat and third coat. So this one's going to take me a little bit longer, but the painting is the fun bit. Whereas this only needs one more coat and then obviously I need to put the tacks in. So I'm going to get as much of this done today as possible. Charlie is in the process of protecting our new old marble table. If you missed the vlog where we got this, um, this is a 19th century marble and iron French garden table set. So Charlie's just adding another layer of protection to the marble top. This is the second coat. The first coat, to much to our surprise, actually absorbed all in. It's mad, isn't it? Because it looks like it just sits on it. Yeah. But, but then it... within an hour, it's literally just been sucked in. It's crazy. It obviously needed it, like your uh, your wood and your linseed oil. Yeah. So what does this actually do? It just get, it just makes it. It's called what's it called? Impermeable. Is that the right word? 
Yeah, so imp impregnating. <laughs> That's actually the word it uses. Impregnating protector. So it's a, it, it is literally just a, you can use it on any sort of stone. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just specific to marble. It, this right. is a really good brand, it's called HG. I was looking at it because it's quite a good brand for um, cleaning products for stone floors as well. Oh, okay. Which we need to look into because our stone floor has quite a lot of stains on it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, given how expensive this table was, it's important, isn't it, that we protect it. So does this mean if Dada spills some red wine on it, it'll be okay? I, b I believe so, but obviously I'm not 100%. I mean, look, the reality is it's a garden table and it, it, look, there are marks on it, it will mark. Mm. But from my perspective, when you spend a lot of money on something, if there's a small thing you can do to protect it and make it last that bit longer, why not? Yeah, I agree. And it is the most beautiful table. A lot of you actually asked about our beautiful Garden Glory shell cushions, which we were just so in love with. And I think they will fit on these chairs, but don't quote me on that. Um, however, we're gonna get some little round cushions to put on here and when we have got people over or if we're literally spending the whole day out here working then i will get out the chairs specifically to use those cushions because the cushions are my favorite well, we've got those other tables haven't we because this this is just a uh an all year round table yeah we've got the other table in the shed yeah really handy to have a fold out table for when you've got guests exactly don't worry we will be getting a lot of use out of our beautiful shell cushions I think this is what we're going to try mixing with um, the Mellow Sage paint for the duck house. I think that would make it a really nice colour, so we've got a bit of wood that we're going to do some stirring with. So let's give it a go. This is the colour that the duck house currently is after our first coat of paint. And actually now that the sun is not shining directly on it, it's a lot better. It looked a lot more white earlier. I think as it's dried it has got darker and it does look so so lovely. But I think we want it to just be a teeny tiny bit more green. So yeah, I'm going to try mixing some of this into the paint and see how it looks. Those memories, time to make some new ones Sun is up, I'm wide awake We're not getting younger If you still love me, then please just let me go I won't stay with you, I need to live my own life Yeah, even if you doubt me now You should know I don't care about the things you say done and I think it looks absolutely gorgeous the perfect shade a little bit of forest pine in with mellow sage I think it's called um, forest vista forest vista sorry yeah. not forest pine but yeah that is absolutely perfect just a little hint more earthy green you smashed it that's actually exactly the color I was envisaging good because it was too white before wasn't it yeah wow I feel like the whole pond has got greener well it may well have it might have been the stuff I've stuck in isn't the idea that to go well, not kills, so I green? Kill, I don't know, it's, it eats the algae. The other one's the clear, we've not got the clear in yet. This one's the one that eats the algae. And this whole time we've been watched by two little boys. Our little shadows. I have now done two coats of the light coloured gold 
and I only had the big um, paintbrush so I'm going to come back a little bit later and go around the areas really close to the green padding with a smaller paintbrush but it suddenly, well it doesn't actually look like it on the camera but it has clouded over quite a lot and it suddenly got a little bit of a nip to the air so I'm heading inside and I have noticed that we've got some bananas that are in the perfect stage of brownness to do a banana bread so I'm going to do my cookie do that's the Thermomix app banana, maple and walnut bread can we just leave it right here Never to touch it again Yeah, even if you doubt me now You should know I don't care about The things you say I don't even know what I want no more No more, no more, yeah I'ma figure out what to do with all my time I know that, yeah I don't even know what to do right now Right now, right now, yeah I'ma figure out what to do with all my time I know that has whipped up some spicy chicken fajitas for our dinner this evening. I've got out our nice tablecloth and crockery. Um, no salsa. No salsa because we ran out. But we've got some spicy chicken, we've got some halloumi, guacamole and fajita wraps. I thought it was a good occasion to get out our lovely tablecloth and linen from Sasha Lottie and my Fintman's Rose Lemonade. Not as flat as I would like it because I only unscrewed it about an hour ago. My lemonade matches our beautiful parasol. the script as soon as Charlie and I sit down to begin eating there's a massive clap of thunder and it is about to start and it's just started pouring with rain so we've had to move everything inside oh no well it was a lovely idea and the banana bread has just come out of the oven and it is smelling amazing good morning my darlings it is now sunday we've already had a really lovely start to the day we did a new walk today um and it was about 45 minutes perfect for the dogs dexter i think he might have either stung himself or trod on something because halfway through he started whimpering and like madly licking his foot but then after five minutes of fuss he seemed to completely forget about it so <laughs> he's okay and uh then we had a really nice Fried eggs on toast from the farm eggs that we picked up on our way home. Charlie has been watching the New Zealand rugby tournaments. They have completely eradicated COVID in New Zealand. There have been two weeks with absolutely no cases. And I was getting quite emotional watching it because they were saying they were obviously doing tributes to the key workers and um, they were celebrating how they didn't even need to wear masks, they didn't need to be social distancing and it was, yeah, it was just quite emotional seeing something go back to normal. I could get emotional about it now, oh my goodness. Um, so I'm in the garage, which means I am doing a little bit more painting. I said it yesterday, but I really just want to get these chairs done now. It's just been too dragged out and we don't even know where we're going to put them now because I just don't feel like we need any more furniture in our bedroom. If you missed it, I'll insert yesterday's vlog up here so you can see how the beautiful bedroom furniture looks. I actually just went and walked in there just to enjoy it because it is so stunning. So yeah, not too sure where these chairs are gonna go. Hopefully they don't just end up chucked in the loft after all these hours I've spent on them. But one of them is ready for the tax to be applied and one of them needs two more coats of the dark gold paint. So I'm gonna do the first coat of the two remaining coats of the dark gold paint. Then I'm gonna tack the original chair um, and then hopefully I can go in with the second coat on the other chair. <sighs> Doesn't make any sense and you probably don't even care, but yeah, that's the plan. I'm gonna pop on, I think, a Sheer Lux podcast while I get cracking. Multiplying. I've been trying to get my weight up, staying prayed up. 
Meditating and taking time away You always posting up pictures Trying to look like you winning I'm writing rhymes in the kitchen I do feel as though Charlie and I have a bit of a Midas touch at the moment, turning everything gold, but I think these urns look a lot better gold than they did in the plain concrete style. And I think what we've decided is we're going to turn the area that you... I don't know if you guys will have seen it, but basically on the other side of the pond, there's a really lovely willow tree. Um, and I've always said it's a little bit of a magic garden, so I think we'll put them there. So it's hidden away because obviously the gold is not in keeping with the house and it'll be a really nice little tucked away magic garden, a nice little discovery for anyone walking around the garden. Charlie has been very busy. Cool, hold up. Cool, you come through. Are you going to show me a spider? No. Right, you can come in. Oh my goodness. This is so crazy. So this little area here is called a boffy. Uh, it's basically like a hidden away shed in the garden wall, which is quite enchanting. Don't but just using the uh, old school toilet. <laughs> As uh, Charlie is currently demonstrating, this is actually um, I don't know if it's medieval, is it? I don't know how old this is. But I wouldn't get toilet, too close. This used to be where the toilets were. So yeah. this used to go into the pond, is what we've been told. Mm. So I don't, I don't know. Not, well, the, the structure is medieval, but I don't know about the actual toilets. Yeah, because obviously in the olden days they used to uh, use the loo down at the bottom of the garden instead of in their house because... Yeah. To be fair, the toilets that were outdoors in even Victorian times, even in like World War I people had toilets outside. Yeah. So these might not even be that old. Mm. Interesting. Mm. So this is a little tucked away shed. I guess, well, a stone shed, stone structure. It yeah. did have um, that workman's bench in it, which Charlie's pulled out. We're gonna see if his brother wants it because George has become quite the carpenter during lockdown. But I think it's really cute tucked away behind the stone wall. And I think we're gonna paint this door a similar green to the duck house and it should blend in a little better that way. So after a few hours of doing our bits and bobs in the garden, Charlie is now on roast duty and a lot of you frequently comment on how great our roasts look and I think Charlie has become the pro at cooking a roast in the last few years. So I think it would be nice, darling, if you share a few tips, let us know. A few tips? Yeah. Um, so what's your first thing that you do? First thing is potatoes because they take the longest. Mm -hmm. So you obviously want to get them peeled and boiling. What kind of potatoes do you uh, use? King Edwards or Maris Piper. Okay. King, e King, e King Edward are the best in my opinion for roast potatoes and then Maris Piper are the best for mash. Mm -hmm. um, so I go, I go King Edwards or if we can get to a farmer's market just a really good farmer's potato. Mm -hmm. You want to parboil them, you just keep an eye on them. I, I don't really do timings when I cook, no. if I'm honest. Um, you just sort of know, like you test them with a knife, You and then you want to fluff them up in your colander. Test them with a knife, so the knife sort of like just part goes in, right? You're not boiling them as much as you want for a mashed potato. No. Um, but don't worry, you can't really mess up too much. Then you want to fluff them up in this. While they're boiling, which is what I'm about to do, mm -hmm. you want to get some garlic, two or three cloves, depending on how many potatoes you're doing. Yeah. Smash them up, stick them in. Now, the key to amazing roast potatoes, but the key, the key is goose or duck fat, which is mm -hmm. obviously not healthy, but then from my perspective, a roast is to be enjoyed. Yeah. So you want uh, goose or duck fat about that much, which is in there already. That's going to go in the oven. Would you say that's about three tablespoons? Oh no, it's about it's about half a cup full. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite. I, quite I, I just do it by eye, really. And would I be right in saying that the trick is you've got to get that hot, yeah, mega hot. So that that's gonna actually, I said oven. That's gonna go in the arga. 
uh, for about 10 minutes while the potatoes boil. Oh wow, so you preheat the oil? Yeah, yeah, so you get that hot, get the garlic cloves in there. Yeah. I tend to put the garlic cloves in there now. Yeah. And I'll remove the garlic cloves and stick them in the bin. Okay. After, oh, okay. And then, and then stick the potatoes in, which we can show the guys in a minute. Yeah. Um, and then they want to go in the oven. And once again, I do Hot, that by right? a, well over an hour. Mm -hmm. I would say like an hour and 15, hour and a half for good roast potatoes. Uh, around 200 degrees? Yeah, around 200 degrees. And you want to you want to give them some love. So you want to turn them around. Mm -hmm. So you want to let the, the duck fat or goose fat absorb into them. And then you want to turn them around as they roast. Yeah. So after about half an hour, check on them and turn them. Okay. Um, and get them nice and crispy. Because I have to say, Charlie and I have eaten in a lot of restaurants in London. We've been to a lot of various family members. And Charlie's roast potatoes are without doubt the best well, in the I'll world. I think that's a compliment. But I think that, well, the challenge in a Roast in a in a restaurant is it's hard to do roast potatoes ahead on of mass. schedule. Oh yeah. So to do them on mass, often restaurants will heat them up, which yeah. they're never going to be any good. Um, but the key is roast potatoes first. And the thing that I've been doing recently when I do beef or any bit of meat, sorry, is I make a trivet, which I learned from Jamie, Jamie Oliver. Mm -hmm. So they, to be honest, you can those carrots are a bit old. You can use veg that's almost out of date mm. and just chop it up roughly. And then what you want to do is you want to stick it in and then you want to, once I've seared the meat, I'm going to stick it on the trivet, on the veg, and let the juices um, mingle with the veg. Mingle. Oh, are we going to eat that veg? You can if you want, but really it's to help make the gravy at the end. Oh. So that all goes in, bit of onion, bit of garlic. Okay. Then I'm going to sear the beef. We're not going to put the beef on for, for a while. Then you put the beef on top of the trivet, roast the beef. And, and if we you... were doing roast chicken, would that go on top yeah, as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. then if we were doing roast chicken, it would go in pretty soon. Oh, but okay. the beef obviously won't take anywhere near as long to cook. Right. And we want it medium rare, or I do anyway. Okay. Um, so that's why I do like doing beef, because it's the easiest bit of meat to roast, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and then, at the end, when the beef or lamb is resting, or even chicken is resting, that's when you make the gravy, which you will use the trivet as part of that, and all the meat juices. Okay. Yeah. Do you need to check your um, spuds? I need to start start it now, really. So uh, just quickly you? before um, I leave you in peace. So what sides are we having with our roast? So my two go-to sides when it's just you and I, with most roast, but particularly with beef, is leeks, which I will finely chop and do with just a bit of olive oil and garlic. Lovely. Really last minute, it takes like two minutes. Amazing. And then we will add some frozen peas that have been cooked in the microwave to the to the leeks mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to have baby carrots with a bit of butter um, a bit of thyme sorry rosemary and then a squeeze of orange and yorkshire puddings and yorkshire puddings yeah normally if we were doing a roast for family i'd do a minimum of three veg but if it's just the two of us it's enough it's going to be a lot of food epic Boom. And right it's probably the last roast of the year Sorry, of before summer really, isn't it? Yeah, so I probably should have done this video a long time ago. I know. <laughs> like, I plan on doing a like, comprehensive IGTV on Hungry Man About Town, but now we've got a beautiful kitchen. Yeah. But that will be next year. Cool. Well, give me a shout when you're doing something else exciting, and I will come and document it. Boom, boom. Nice. This pattern is crazy, though, isn't it? That's why you got such good guns. So just fluff them up like that. Chuff them up. Fluff them up. So the aim with the chuffing of the spuds is to increase... Trust, I don't think that's a term I don't think you should use. It is. That's what Jamie Oliver says. Chuffing up the spuds. You're chuffing your chuffing. <laughs> is that rude? <laughs> it's a rude thing, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's pretend that it's the technical term. <laughs> well, this is nice and hot now, look. Wow, so Charlie's oil is so hot that it's actually ultra, ultra boiling. Ultra at this point. Yeah, it's actually spitting. And the reason why you fluff up the spuds, you can see that they're really rough around the edges now, is to increase the surface area and this makes them super crispy, so more area is going to get the oil on it, um, and yeah, that is basically how you get them more crispy. Then he's going to tip them onto his scorching hot tray of oil. So you coat them. Yeah, you want, you want them to be absolutely coated in the... the I think this is, yeah, this is goose fat. <clears throat> No, it's duck fat. <laughs> it's duck fat. I really don't know the difference, to be honest with you. There must be one. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you could do this with olive oil, or you could do this with vegetable oil. 
I think if you don't have goose fat, vegetable oil is probably the next best bet. Okay. Because um, olive oil, I don't know the exact science, but if you oh, if you heat olive oil to a certain temperature, I think it, it can actually become a bit unhealthy. And it's a bit of a fire hazard, isn't it? I don't know, but I mean, honestly, the, 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 the thing that makes the biggest difference is goose fat. Yeah. It really does. And I know so, they look a little bit crumbly, but mm -hmm. they will. And also, the crumbly bits are the best bits. Yeah. They're the bits that you just like snuff before or while you're serving. Yeah, and the trick Chef's is to drink. try and get these. Now, what is quite handy is if you've got a, um, like a, a, a slotted spoon, because mm -hmm. as, they, as they cook and soak up the oil, yeah. that's what's the best thing for turning them. Oh, okay. Once they're a bit crispier. Oh, my mouth is watering. Yeah. And then I like to put a bit of rosemary on here. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just a little bit of salt. A little bit of salt. So there's no other seasoning on there right now? No. Yummy. I'll be honest, the aga takes some getting used to, but that, oh yeah, I didn't have salt, any salt yet. Boom, boom. And we are in. Fabulous. We'll keep an eye on them. I, I would say like an hour and a half. Wow. Crispier good, the better. For good spots. Which means we've got ages for this. Right. Side note, but do you remember in, in the vlogs like two or three weeks ago when we first got the washing machine and the dishwasher, I was originally a little bit annoyed that it doesn't fit in this gap here, um, the fridge that is, but now I'm so glad because I think this is such a nice view. So we have our wax jackets and our most used wellies slash walking boots in this little area here. And I think it's just so much nicer to see this than a big fridge which tucks away perfectly in that corner along with spare wellies. <laughs> Goodness me. We are excited to have guests over because we have plenty of wellies to provide them with. I don't know if I've really shown these on video that much, um, but Charlie and I were so kindly sent um, matching his and hers. They're, I don't know if you'd call them Wellington boots or just, you know, proper countryside boots from a brand called Le Chamu. And I'll leave them linked down below. These are Charlie's. I think they are so gorgeous. Um, if you're looking for a really last minute Father's Day gift, I think they would be a spectacular gift idea. Charlie's got his little... Um, half height barber welly boots and then these are my boots from Le Chamou as you can see they're already nice and worn um they are so comfortable I love this diamond pattern in the leather here seriously comfortable obviously they're water resistant they are um tightenable expandable on the top here and I think they are absolutely gorgeous. So they are my most worn on country walks at the moment. This is my barber, which is about 30 years old. And then a newer jacket, which I was very kindly sent from Gandhi's, a little bit lighter. And then Charlie's got a bell staff wax jacket. And I think this is Charlie's barber, yes. So that is our countryside attire. Okay, chef, what's next? So we are searing the beef uh, before we put it in, and I put this trivet in the oven like just for a few minutes beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've just taken the roasties out to show you that I'm now going to turn them. And look, oh, they're going yes. nice crispiness already. They've only been in for what, about 25 minutes? Yep. Um, as I say, if you've not got an argo, if you've got an oven, uh, it's just about keeping on. I always think about an hour. Just over an hour you want, probably. They're sticking a bit, but they will be good. They smell incredible. There you go. Yeah. And then, I'll obviously put them back in. And then the beef just wants a quick sear on both sides, and then that's gonna go in for about an hour as well. In what temperature for the beef? Uh, 200. Epic. And that bad boy over. And Charlie's prepared the leeks. Is there any butter in there or just plain? Just a bit of olive oil. A bit of olive oil. And then we've got the carrots in here, which will have a bit of butter in there already. And then you just put a shallow amount of water, boiling water, boil them in the butter, and then have a squeeze of orange. Orange? Um, or clementine, but we've just got orange. Mm -hmm. um, at the end with some thyme. Fantastic. I'm so excited because I often get a little bit of leftover beef, just a tiny bit. And I don't like to miss out on anything. 
It's about an hour later and the spuds are looking absolutely incredible. Charlie left the meat to rest for around 15 minutes before um, carving and it smells mouth-wateringly delicious. The little baby carrots have been um, cooked with just butter, is it darling? Uh, so a little bit of butter and mm -hmm. then you squeeze um, ideally a clementine but oh, I squeeze yeah. an orange to have a clementine. Delicious. And then some thyme. And the juices from the beef are being made into a lovely gravy. So how do you do that? I'm messing it up actually. Um, so it's basically just the trivet and then all the juices that come off the beef and then you just add some beef stock. Oh, that's it? Yeah, I mean you could add any stock. You could add vegetable stock, you could add just a bit of hot water if you really wanted. And you've got but a bit ideally, of flour there to thicken? Yeah, a bit of flour to thicken. And then any other juices that come off the meat. I've cooked the meat obviously medium because you like it medium. For a medium right? but... And then we've got the leeks over here that have been cooking in a little bit of olive oil. And we'll just add a few frozen peas. Cook them in the microwave first. Yeah. And we use um, the Thermomix. It's currently in the dishwasher, and it's oh, currently yeah, up here. Needs to come out, actually. Ooh. So Charlie had. Wow! <laughs> oh my goodness, that Boom. has got to be a world record. <laughs> that, now that is because oh we're using our new Le Creuset shallow. It's because it's a shallow um, <laughs> dish. That is the most insane Yorkshire pudding I've ever seen. So I think. Um, <laughs> The trick is to get your oven super duper hot. I saw that Charlie had it on 240 degrees. And what's the recipe, darling? Uh, so I think for eight, it is, don't point me on this, 200 millilitres of, yeah, 200 millilitres of milk. So this was 100 millilitres of milk. Two eggs, sorry, four eggs. So this was two eggs. Um, and 140 grams of plain flour. So that was 70 grams of plain flour. And you blitz that all together in your Thermomix or whatever blender you've got. You pop a little bit of, do you put olive oil in the bottom? Uh, vegetable oil. Sunflower vegetable oil, oil, sunflower oil in your tray and it looks like that. So that's how deep the tray is, very, very shallow well, indeed. That's a shallow one that we mm. got from this ironworks, didn't we? Yes. Um, the Ar Arga do a really nice set as well. It depends on what you go for. I've probably slightly overcooked them, I reckon. <laughs> But the trick is to pop the tray and the oil into your oven to get it piping hot before you put the Yorkshire pudding liquid in there. And then a top tip, if you want them to be really voluminous like this, is to not open your oven door because that can make them fall as flat as a pancake. So Charlie's now sieving out the gravy so we don't have little bits of vegetable in our gravy. Um, and that's pretty much it, isn't it, darling? We're almost there. You got the nerve to be on me, faking your life for the IG. If you got my number, don't ask me, cause baby, I'm on hiatus. And what a gorgeous place to enjoy our Sunday roast. This view, I just I love it so much with the church. Down in the distance, we have got our same table linen as you saw in yesterday's vlog. This honestly is mouth-watering. So with my Sunday roast beef, I like to have red currant jelly. I basically have this with every meal that has gravy. I will have red currant jelly and of course horseradish sauce. We splurged and got the Dalesford one. Um, but I have to say it's nothing extra special. I won't get the expensive one next time, but it is Oh, honestly, my mouth is watering so much. There might be a little bit left for my two teenies. Now that is freaking hot. <laughs> now that, my darlings, is a perfect roast potato. Fluffy on the inside, crispy on the outside. Well done, darling. <laughs> Soaking the moments you live in, yeah. You got the nerve to be on me, faking your life for the IG. If you got my number, don't ask me, cause baby, I'm on hiatus. That was honestly one of the best roasts I think I have ever had, feeling incredibly full now. Um, I've just done all the washing up, took about 40 minutes to do the washing up. Charlie and I have a bit of an unwritten rule where whoever doesn't cook, does the washing up, so it was my turn. Um, but I'm gonna end the vlog here, darlings, so thank you so much for watching. I will see you 
not tomorrow, the next day for another one. Bye.